don't know the power of the dark side. Only a Sith that deals in absolutes. Hello there. May the 4th is finally upon us, and that means two things. You can unapologetically use as many Star Wars quotes as you want in order to drive your friends crazy. I've been looking forward to this. And it also means that Star Wars The Bad Batch just released today on Disney+. Plus. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at all of the stuff from Episode 1, including the real true enemy of The Bad Batch, as well as tons of new details on Omega, who of course is the new character introduced in the series. So before we dive into all these details, there will be spoilers, so you've been warned. I like to blow things up because I like to blow things up! And with that said, what a great way to start Star Wars Day. This first opening episode of The Bad Batch was spectacular from the writing to the directing and the music to the animations. This episode had everything we Star Wars fans come to expect, and it made me feel connected to the characters. It kept the story moving forward, and right until the end, I couldn't keep my eyes off the screen, and I was legit disappointed when the episode ended. Yes, for me personally, it was that good of an opening episode, and I just can't wait to see where the rest of this story takes us in episode two, which premieres in just a couple days on Friday, May 7th. Here. So at the very beginning, we got to see a young version of Kanan go through the heartbreak of Order 66 as he witnessed his master fall to the very clones that they trusted. This was heartbreaking, very hard to watch. And of course, the Bad Batch saw it all go down as well. And bewildered and confused by this, they retreated back to Kamino, which is where Omega comes in. And Omega is clearly one of the main focal points of the story, but there are some really important details about her that you may not even know about. And these very details were revealed by D. Bradley Baker, the voice actor behind The Bad Batch, before the show even aired. And if you've watched the first episode, you already know that Omega has been 100% confirmed to be an enhanced clone, just like The Bad Batch. And there were some hints in the episode that she may be even more powerful than we all realize, such as having the ability to have a heightened sense about things and the ability to single-handedly fire the weapon out of Crosshair's hands. Not an easy task by any means, even for an enhanced clone like Omega that has never fired a blaster like that before. And that's where the quote from D. Bradley Baker comes in about Omega. In an interview with GeekCulture.co, Baker says the following about Omega and what he describes as her having, get this, an interesting potential of powers. And this is what he had to say. He said, it's interesting in terms of the story in the writing to have this kind of personal relationship with a young character and to see how that changes and how they accommodate that and how that works. Because it's more of like an uncle niece or a father child dynamic, but not entirely because Omega has her own interesting potential of powers. And so it's interesting to see all of that unfold. End quote. So the usage of the words interesting potential of powers combined with what we saw Omega do in episode one has led many fans to believe that she may be force sensitive in some ways. And that could be very possible as we saw in The Mandalorian where Moff Gideon reveals that he successfully extracted the blood of Grogu in what appears to be an attempt to utilize the midichlorians for cloning projects. So what's to say that they haven't done something similar with Omega? Whether she has the full force powers of a Jedi or even has force powers to begin with remains to be seen, but we also know that she seems to have a connection with Hunter in particular. She recognized Hunter immediately during Palpatine's speech and appears to have imitated his movements as well throughout the whole episode. I am AZ3452118962464987213 your assigned medical droid. Ha! Another revelation that was revealed in this episode is the true enemy of the Bad Batch. 
Yes, Tarkin is the obvious enemy here, and you may also be thinking that Crosshair is too, but the true enemy here could lie deep within themselves, the very chip embedded in the Bad Batch's brains. If Crosshair can be so vulnerable to the chip, then what stops the chip from somehow randomly taking over one of the Bad Batch members at any given time? Tech does indicate that he cannot be 100% certain that they are immune to the programming, but he thinks their enhanced abilities make them invulnerable to it. So this means that Omega may be in danger at any time or vice versa. She could be the threat to the Bad Batch as well. Will this all actually come to pass remains to be seen but we do know that one member of the Bad Batch has already fallen victim to the implanted chip, and Crosshair clearly isn't able to gain control of himself, at least not yet. My guess is we are immune to the effects of the programming, though I can't be 100% certain of it. Episode 1 of The Bad Batch had many interesting revelations in it, a surprise appearance from Kanan and his master, and an all-new character with a mysterious backstory. Will Crosshair gain control of himself again and rejoin The Bad Batch? What is the connection between Omega and Hunter, and is she Force-sensitive in any way? And will we see any other major surprise appearances from any other famous Jedi or perhaps Sith? in upcoming episodes. Leave your theory in the comments below and let me know what you think is going to happen next. And don't forget episode 2 is only days away and premieres this Friday, May 7th, so it's just around the corner. Smash that like button if you are excited for episode 2. And if you are new here to the Star Wars Headquarters family, use the force and smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of new upcoming videos. We've got a lot to look forward to, including the rest of The Bad Batch, The Book of Boba Fett, The Mandalorian Season 3, and so much more, including the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which has already begun filming, and the Ahsoka series as well. So as you can see, tons of Star Wars stuff is coming up, and Star Wars is about to get real crazy here soon. So you don't want to miss out on all of the news. And thanks once again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care and may the fourth be with you always.